All right, so we are finally getting to this everybody's a Pisces, including you video. I know Pisces season is almost over. As I'm recording this, it is March 8th. <laughs> so we probably have, what, a, a week or two, about two more weeks left in Pisces season, but it's all good. I am Tanya Poole, for those of you who are watching me for the very first time, and I am an author, an astrologer, a teacher, a life coach, a speaker. I do so much. And today I am coming here on uh, YouTube to talk about Pisces season. This video, if, if you saw the title, you already know, is Everybody's a Pisces, including you. So I don't care. If you're a Gemini sun sign, if you're a Sagittarius, if you're a Virgo, if you're a Capricorn, guess what? We are in Pisces season, which means everybody's a Pisces, including you. The sun is in the sign of Pisces. And so this is the time when Pisces is teaching us the lessons that we all should learn in life. So before I go too deep into this video, I want to let you all know what to um, what to expect in this video. Basically, and I already kind of hinted at it, the first thing you'll learn is why everybody is a Pisces, including you. You'll learn the qualities, the higher vibration and the lower vibration of Pisces energy, um, what planets are in Pisces right now and how that they are impacting all of us. Um, I will actually pull, hmm, I actually pulled them, but I haven't looked at them yet. I pulled... Uh, a couple of uh, tarot and oracle cards to give us all wisdom and guidance for Pisces season. And then um, I will go through all of the signs. So I will go from Aries all the way through Pisces to tell each one of you, if you are a sun sign, uh, sun, moon, or rising sign, whatever your sun, moon, and rising sign is, um, what you should be focusing on during Pisces season. So for example, if you are an Aries sun sign person, when I get to the Aries segment, I will be explaining to you um, what you should be focusing on during um, Pisces season. And not just, like I just said, not just sun sign, but if you are a rising sign, because sometimes that resonates more. Um, so really your rising sign is important, but if you don't know that, then your sun or your moon sign. Um, and then I will give the wisdom that you need to know during this time of the year. All right. So I have a couple of very, very quick announcements. So my business will be changing very, very soon. How I make my videos available, um, how and who I'm offering readings to is going to change very soon. It's actually going to change in Aries season because that's a good time to make uh, new changes and uh, start down a new path. Just a little hint for those of you all who are looking to do the same in your own lives. So I really highly encourage you, if you've been watching my videos and you're like, wow, I really want a reading by Tanya or I really want to purchase that product by her. Or I really want to, you know, and you've been kind of on the fence and haven't been pulling that trigger. I highly encourage you to look down below in the description box at everything that I offer right now and go ahead and make your purchases because like I said, how I will make my, um, some of my videos will still obviously be here on YouTube, but um, special master classes and um, even these everybody's a sign, including you, they may not be as long here on YouTube. I may only have the introduction and then have the full video available to a select group of people. And so um, if you want a reading um, from me or if your classes that you've been wanting, um, in different products and whatnot, I highly encourage that you go ahead and get those now while they are still open and available to any and everyone. All right. And um, just in case y'all don't know, I am a moon sign Gemini and it sits in the house of my career. And let me tell you what that means. That means in my business and my career life, there's always change. <laughs> I can't do the same thing, but for so long. And so I'm getting better at announcing it to people when um, change is afoot, you know, so I'm letting you know, that, you know, change is coming. And so I would like for you to grow and change with me, those of you who um, want to. So secondly, um, I have two 
master classes that are available for a very limited time to download. The first one is the uh, Feminine Self-Care Secrets to Attract Abundance and Joy. In that one hour class, I teach about um, basically what, it's, what the title is saying, how to self-care in a feminine way that allows your abundance and your joy to be uh, cultivated within you and therefore attracted to you as well. Um, and so I go into a lot of detail about, you know, what that is about and how to actually self-care in that kind of way. And so that class will be available also for a very limited time, probably until towards the end of March or maybe going into airy season which i believe starts on march 21st so um you want to get that the second class that i have available right now is pleasure and abundance are your birthright that is also a one hour class um, I share a lot of stories in that class. Um, I, I explain why, you know, making the best of what you have is kind of devastating. I know we've been taught to, you know, make the best of what you have, but I, I explain why that is devastating to the pleasure and abundance that you want in your life, why pleasure is so um importance and why luxury is not a dirty word and you know how to amplify your your pleasure and abundance in your life and so those both of those classes i would say get both of them because they work hand in hand they actually both came from a full course that i taught a while back um it was a 21 day course that had about 15 classes in it so these are just two of of those of the full course and so um so it would be great if you downloaded both of them because they're working hand in hand or you can just get one, which, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. So they are both available, but they are both available for a very limited time. Um, I am doing a class, a live in-person class again on April 3rd with um, licensed therapist Neajula Hendricks Wilson. We did this class about a month ago uh, on the secrets of um, using crystals and astrology to, to allow abundance in your life. We are including um, topics such as um, somatic healing techniques and um, energy medicine and how uh, removing certain blocks from you, whether they're physical blocks or just uh, emotional or spiritual blocks, is um, allows the abundance that you desire in your life, whether it's abundance of money, abundance of joy, abundance of friendship, abundance of love, abundance of peace, you know, um, into your life. And so that class will take place. It is a live in-person class on April 3rd. And... Um, we are um tickets are will soon either they're available now or soon will be available please look in the description box because hopefully i have the link down there uh so that you can book your tickets but it will take place in in greensboro north carolina so if you're in greensboro or you're in the surrounding area high point winston-salem charlotte raleigh durham wherever make sure that you um get your tickets now and come on out get my book the magic of self-love leave a love offering also known as a donation down below if my videos are blessing your life in any kind of way please subscribe to this channel like this this video and um, follow me on instagram and facebook those links are down below as well because that's where i announce um, where the changes will be taking place in my business and that is also where i will announce where i'm opening up my email list again and how you can get on on that list so you'll be notified about everything that i do that is it for the announcements. And you know I will be repeating myself several times. Got to fluff my hair out. Okay, all right. So here we go. Pisces. <laughs> Pisces season, y'all. Pisces is the 12th sign of the zodiac. It's like the baby of the zodiac. But at the same time, it's kind of like the ancient one of the zodiac. What I mean by that is that because Pisces is the 12th sign, it's the last sign. You know, we've gone through Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and then Pisces at the very end. Um, but at the same time, when I said that it feels kind of like an ancient one, 
because Pisces, wherever it is in your birth chart, um, and we all have all 12 signs of the Zodiac in our uh, birth chart. <clears throat> so wherever Pisces is for you, um, it represents kind of what was, you know, that, that part of you that is before you emerge into the physical world. Um, and so that's why I say it's kind of, it's, it's like Pisces represents um, us before we enter into the physical world, but also us as we are detaching from the physical world. Um, because spi spi Pisces. Pisces is a very um, spiritual sign. It really deals more so with the spiritual world uh, more than um, than it does with the physical world. And so um, when you when you know where Pisces is in your own birth chart, you know that you're dealing with a very spiritual aspect of yourself. Um, so for example, in my own particular uh, birth chart or natal chart, Pisces for me comes in an area of my chart that deals with relationships, that deals with um, how I relate, whether it be a, a, a love relationship, you know, a partnership in that way, or even a business partnership. I'm um, just me and another person. And so it is very important because Pisces is a very spiritual sign and deals with dreams and imagination and fantasy and all of that, that for example, for me, that there has to be an element, a very intentional element of spirituality in my relationships. So where is where wherever Pisces is in your chart indicates where that kind of spirituality shows up. Now there are several other signs that deal with with spirituality and faith and belief, and um, but I I would say that Pisces is probably number one in that um in that area pisces is the um is is highly also intuitive and so wherever it shows up in your chart is where you may find that you are quite intuitive about whatever is going on so for example if it falls in a place um that in your chart that deals with um family. You may be very intuitive when it comes to matters of family or children, you know, like things don't always have to be said. You just kind of intuitively know. Um, if it falls in the area of your business and, and career or long-term goals, then you may be more intuitive um, about which moves to make, or you may be somebody who has to really check in, like, super what did god say about this you know before you make any business moves you know um and so that you know pisces really does have that spiritual uh, dreamy imaginative quality which is very good because we live in a physical world we deal with um, physical things and situations in life all the time and there can be this disconnect from spirit and so Pisces energy and Pisces season in and of itself reminds us to reconnect with our higher self, with God, our uh, ascended ancestors, however, you know, whatever you work with, to really um, commune with that energy. Um, on its lower end, because all signs have a higher and a lower energy, Pisces energy can be so detached that um it, it 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 can cause one to become very unrealistic and unpractical impractical Unpra impractical i think <laughs> um can cause one to um be so spiritual what's the saying you're so spiritual that you're earthly no good you know um and so just kind of floaty that there's no real um practical attachment to the here and now um <clears throat> On its lower energy, Pisces within all of us can show up as escapism. So, for example, if I use myself again as an example, with Pisces being in the area of my chart that deals with, with relationships, if I don't cultivate that Pisces energy within me, then I could use relationships as a way to escape from the rest of the world. Like, the rest of my world could be falling apart as long as I'm just, you know, because I'm so focused on this relationship. 
I'm really not that person because I cultivate that part of me, but that it could show up that way. Um, or having so much faith in the person that I am in a relationship with that I ignore other signs, other things that's going on. You know, if Pisces, going back to the example of career, if Pisces is in the place of your chart where um, it deals with career and long-term goals and your reputation, then you could, and you're not cultivating that energy, you could um, be so spiritually swayed, but by what spirit? You get what I'm saying? Like, you could be someone whose every business and money move is whatever cult you belong to says, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, or you could ignore warning signs as it relates to your career and your goals because you're just all about the dream that you have in your head that you're not making real practical um choices um and so you know and again using the example of family if pisces is in the area of family and you're not utilizing or cultivating that piscean part of you then you could be ignoring signs uh going on in your family you could be somebody that's just like let's just pray about it right but you never then take action on what you prayed about um and so you might be ignoring things that's going on with your children because you don't want to deal with it you don't want to see it uh because pisces energy can be um can deal with escapism can deal with self-sabotage can also deal with um illusions you know convincing yourself that something is one way when it's actually different and so as i always tell people you know this is why it's so important to not just dwell on your sun sign or your rising sign you know or your moon sign i mean unless those are in pisces as well because we all carry the entire zodiac in our chart and so if let's just say if you are a Leo and you only are caring about Leo matters and you don't look at where Pisces is in your chart, you could be self-sabotaging yourself and not know why. You could be um, in an illusion about certain things in your life and ignoring certain things in your life and getting tripped up on it time and time again and not understand where the breakdown is happening because you're so focused on being a Leo or a Virgo or a Sagittarius or whatever. Um, and so it's very important that you that we all cultivate the Pisces part of us because it is that part of us that yearns to really connect with our higher self, that yearns to connect with um, the divine, with God, the most high, with, with spirit. It is that part of us that gets inspired, that's inspirited, right, to be inspired to then pull down um divine messages or pull down ideas or the part of us that has dreams and imagination and fantasy and then to then make them real and so that's why knowing where pisces is for you um is very important again like i announced in my um announcements i hope you listen to it but if you didn't i will say it again here because my business is about to change how i offer my readings is also about to change so if you want a um a birth a natal chart reading from me make sure you click down below and get the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading because there i do look at where pisces is for you any planets that are in pisces and even if you don't have planets in pisces i look at what how pisces in your birth chart was manifesting your life and how to elevate that or rectify certain things with that so that your spiritual life um is in balance with your physical life and that you're easily able to or better able to um manifest your dreams and your imagination all of that is piscean in nature into the physical world so um as i'm recording this we are about to have a full moon in the sign of Virgo. And Virgo is the opposite sign of Pisces. And so to have a full moon in Pisces's opposite sign, um, all of the signs have an, have an opposite. And your opposite is only there to help you to stay in balance. So Virgo energy isn't all right and Pisces all wrong and Pisces all right and Virgo all wrong. They, they work together in harmony to balance out, um, to help us to balance out our lives. 
So both Virgo and Pisces deal with service, how one serves. Pisces deals with um, service spiritually, how one, um, how one's spiritual self helps to serve them as well as others, how one's anything intangible, one's dreams, one, one's imagination, one's spiritual connection, one's connection to God, one, you know, all of that kind of stuff, um, is how, uh, is what Pisces is dealing with. Virgo serves in a practical earthly kind of way. So Virgo is more so about, okay, what daily habits are in place that's going to serve me and my and those around me well what um habits do i have to have what rituals do i have to do daily what um what is my diet what do i eat how do i move my body do how do i you know function in my physical body uh because virgo definitely deals with the phys the actual physical body and physical health so Pisces is dealing with spiritual health and wellness. Virgo is dealing with physical health and wellness. And when both of them are whole and healthy, it helps to serve you, the, the person, the individual, and it helps you to be a better service to the world. When both of those are unhealthy, then you find yourself drained because you're trying to help this person, you're trying to do, you know. And I see that a lot, especially um, with people who who's, job is in the spiritual realm for example if you are a priest a priestess a preacher a pastor a prophetess a card reader a tarot or you know sometimes those people get very drained because they're trying to serve everybody with their spiritual gifts and they need the virgo part of them of their chart to pull them down to make it real practical so that they are not expending their spiritual gifts in a way that then drains them spiritually, which will then also drain them physically. You get what I'm saying? Um, another thing is like musicians and artists um, typically have strong Pisces placements, even if they are not Pisces sun signs, they typically have a lot going on in the sign of Pisces or some kind of influence there. And so they are able to tune in and hear songs in their head that they have to then compose or go into the studio to physically create or they can see an image in their mind that they have to then physically go and paint or take a picture of you get what i'm saying so it's that spiritual component that unseen dream imaginary part of them that then has to be converted into something very physical so with us having the sun and the sign of pisces that spiritual dreamy imaginative space at the same time that we're about to have a full moon in the sign of Virgo, very physical and practical, we may feel that tug um, where it's like, I just want to be dreamy. I just want to imagine. I just want to whatever, you know, but that Virgo full moon is like, okay, but um, how are you going to make this practical? What's going to, how are you going to convert your dreams into a manifested reality? How is it going to become physical or make manifest in your life? You know, the Virgo, how Virgo helps Pisces um, is that it helps Pisces to remember, helps us all to remember that we are in this physical world. And though we may love the spiritual world, we may love to meditate and dream and go off onto the mountaintop, but we are still here in this physical world. And likewise, six months from now, when we're in Virgo season, we will have a full moon in the sign of Pisces. So during Virgo season, we'll be all, you know, in the physical world and thinking about you know all the things we have to get done and our to-do list and all of that kind of stuff and that Pisces full moon will remind us to connect with spirit and to dream and not to forego our um our dreams and our imagination so they they you know and all of the signs do that you know during Aquarius season we had a full moon in Aquarius's opposite sign which is which was Leo so the beauty of astrology is that there's this um this beautiful dance that all of the signs are doing with each other all the time and all of these check-in points that each one uh is having with each other every single time and it's so predictable and the better you get at understanding that the better you understand that um all of these things are happening so that we can we can get into divine flow you know, we can master ourselves and our own energies. And so, um, you know, so yes, yeah, so that is what, you know, this full moon that we're about to experience in um, Pisces uh, will be helping us to do. 
also we we as i'm recording this we're at the tail end of a mercury retrograde mercury was retrograde in the sign of pisces a little bit in aquarius too but it came back into pisces again and so um, I won't go into all of that because I talked about that in my Mercury Retrograde video. I'll link that down below so you can go back and look at that. Because uh, we will be experiencing, even though we're coming out of Mercury Retrograde, we will be experiencing some of that, uh, some residual retrograde energy for the next week or two. So I still encourage you to watch that video. So we had the sun in Pisces, Mercury went retrograde in Pisces. We had a new moon about two weeks ago in Pisces, um, about to have this full moon in the sign of Virgo. And so we, for the past few weeks, have really been in um, a space of either very spiritual or very emotional or a lot of miscommunication with emotions, hot emotions tied to it. Um... And for some, if you weren't mindful, then you probably were in kind of a dream illusionary space where you just didn't even know what the hell was going on. You know, all of that is what Pisces can do to one. One can really get lost in the waters of Pisces. Like you can really, it's a water sign. You, If you're not careful, it can drown you in emotion. It can drown you in confusion. It can drown you in illusions that you think are real. Um, Again, if you watch that Mercury retrograde video, I talk about um, that this particular Pisces season, especially with Mercury being retrograde there, may, could make us feel like Alice in Wonderland. You didn't know what was up, what was down. You know, everything was in riddles. You might ask questions and you didn't get clear answers. You're not sure if you're even going in the right direction in your life. You're just like, whatever, just kind of floating along, you know. So that is something that a lot of us maybe have perhaps um, experienced during this uh, Pisces season. But is all helpful because the upcoming season is Aries and Aries is all about taking action. Aries is the beginning of spring, new life. Let's get to it. Let's plant those seeds, you know? So if you don't spend this time, if we don't spend this time um, con communing with spirit and dreaming and imagining what we want, then we won't know what to do in a few weeks when we enter into Aries season. So all of the signs are working on each other. They're building upon each other um, in general. And then also in your own birth chart, they build upon each other as well. All right, so what is next? I want to talk, I don't wanna talk about nothing else. I just wanna do the Oracle reading. <laughs> so I pulled, I was gonna pull one tarot card, one Oracle card, but what happened was, I pulled one tarot card, then one oracle card flew out. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep it. And then I pulled another oracle card. So we have a total of three cards. And I basically asked, what do we almost need to know, do and be aware of during this Pisces season? Um, what wisdom and guidance is there for us? So, whoa, okay. So the tarot card that came up is the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords. So, excuse me. The Seven of Swords is a card of <laughs> trying to get away with something. Whenever I see this card, it's like somebody who is trying to be very strategic. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, wrong with being strategic. Obviously, we all have to have strategy and plan in our life. But it's something about the Seven of Swords that's more so about being strategic in a devious way. Um, and one of the things about Pisces, and I didn't say this, um, but one of, one of the things about Piscean energy on its lowest vibration and some Pisces people, some Pisces sun signs have this, but wherever Pisces is in your chart is might be where it shows up, um, is deviant or uh, devious behavior. Um, and is not necessarily intentional, like I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that and I'm going to get this person like that. It's just amalgamation of lying to oneself and not 
Sometimes I see it, when you ask a Pisces person, they'll deny it, but I've seen it and I've seen it in people's charts too. So I don't care what they be saying. They be lying. Okay. <laughs> they will lie about this part because it's, it's a hard truth to deal with. But um, for a lot of Pisces people in general, sun sign Pisces or rising sun Pisces or wherever Pisces shows up in your own personal birth chart, because if you are refusing to see the truth, you can't speak the truth. So if you're already in the illusion, escapism part of Pisces in your life, um, then when somebody asks you a direct question or they need, a, you know, clear, concise information, you kind of dance around the answer, you know, not really give the real answer, not lie, but not tell the truth. And so that's, that's devious. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a way to keep the smoke and mirrors up. And so it's so interesting to see the seven of swords, um, as the card that came up because, and this is this is a reading for everybody, me, you, everybody, again, everybody's a Pisces, including you. So we have to be mindful of where devious behavior shows up in our lives. The parts of our lives where I'm really feeling strongly is the parts where we don't want to tell a lie, but we don't really want to tell the truth. So we kind of dance around, we kind of sugarcoat, we kind of give the impression of something to avoid, and this usually happens because you want to avoid um, the consequences of just being outright honest, right? Um, and and it may not be with anything serious in life, but the problem is how this can become a serious problem is that um, it it. Uh, people can sense when you're not being fully honest. People can sense when you gave a half truth, but not the whole truth. Um, so help me God, you know, <laughs> people can tell when, um, when the whole picture has not been conveyed and we've, and every, all of us have been on the receiving end of that where somebody seems like they're being honest, but not really completely. Um, the seven of swords is like when you are, trying to get away with something where you're cunning, where, um, cunning and devious. And, um, and, and it's this belief that if I do things this way, you know, if I kind of go around, you know, the situation, I can still come up. But the problem is, is that you really don't. You know, it's like when you try to hustle your way around a situation, um, because, you know, you, you think it's going to cause you to come up and, you know, where you can have your cake and eat it too. But usually with that, why well, I keep feeling like something's in my eyelash. Okay. I'm sorry. But usually with that, um, it bites you in the ass in the long term. And because you skip steps, you cannot, I cannot skip certain steps there. There's a reason why you don't um, go from kindergarten to getting your diploma, right? Because there are steps, there's levels, right? There are things, there's lessons that you have to learn. And I'm saying it this way because I feel like some people are maybe not necessarily being devious, but just trying to take the quick and easy way um, to a certain outcome. And you're really hurting yourself in doing that because it's go by going through the process is how you learn what you need to learn. And if you skip those steps, you might get to a certain outcome that you want, but you won't be as skillful, as knowledgeable, and actually it's going to hurt you in the long run. So don't try to skip steps. Don't try to avoid things. If anything, use this seven of swords energy. We should all be using it um, more so to be more positively strategic, to look at everything that's on the board, you know, so to not go into the part of Pisces that wants us to be drowned in an illusion, but to see things clearly, see why that person's making that move and that person's making that move. And what does that mean for me? And how, you know, see all of the, the, the pieces on the game board, you know, be very strategic in that way, but not necessarily in a way that is like trying to get something for nothing. Um, trying to, avoid consequences by not telling the whole truth or lying or uh, devising a uh, plan schemes um, that ultimately you think are going to help you but are not going to help you in the long run and so 
Oh, I get it. Okay. All right. I hope y'all listen to this. So the card that flew out that I wasn't even going to keep at first, but I said, no, it needs to be kept, is this card called All That Glitters. All that glitters comes from that saying, you know, all that glitters isn't gold. And sometimes, you know, we try to do things um, or go after things that um, look shiny, um, which would explain even the seven of swords. Because if we're in, we're in Pisces season, if we're using the seven of swords energy, which is cunning and deception of any kind, I don't care how small it is. I don't care if it's you go to McDonald's and say, I didn't get my fries in my bag and you know that you did you you get what i'm saying it doesn't even have to be anything major it's just all of those little lies that we tell um can come back to 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 bite us and so all that glitters sometimes we make these we do these schemes as the seven of swords is indicating because we're going after something that appears shiny that looks good but ultimately is not um, best for us. So I'm going to read the information that came with, that comes with this card. All that glitters, a need to see beyond the superficial, the desire to don a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature, trying to be something you're not, chasing after every sparkly thing, being mercurial. <clears throat> it's only human it's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets and paint a pretty picture of oneself. It's natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion. But if it sparkles, is it better? Whether it's a fast car, a big house, a title or position, the stamp of authority or the sparkling of diamonds, these icons let you know something about a person, place or thing. Or do they? The truth is that people seek to acquire things because of what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them more attractive. This card signals that it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Learn to recognize the mask people wear and the motives underlying them. Imagine that all the glitter is gone. Would you still desire the object or the person? The relationship message says, sometimes we try to become something we're not to impress others. We embellish a story a bit, adding some dramatic elements to make us appear, to make us more appealing. The real person becomes hidden behind the sparkle and shine. Then there are times when we don't see the true value of someone else because he or she may not have the glitz and glamour that seems so desirable. Now is the time to look past the surface, beyond the mask, to the essence of a person. Who that person is, not what he or she has or can give you, is important. See beyond the glitter and look for the inner glow. Use the eyes of your heart. Let go of artifice and let what is authentic shine. And the prosperity message says, <laughs> sometimes an opportunity looks so good that it glitters like gold and you just can't resist it, especially when it appears others are doing so well and have hit the, the mother load. During the American gold rush, everyone hurried west to find their fortune and then deserted entire towns after the mining depleted the gold veins in the earth. So too, can you deplete yourself as you chase after the latest shiny thing that has caught your eye. There is a mercurial quality to your present circumstances. Pay no attention to those who chase after fool's gold. Resist the temptation to be jealous of others. What they have achieved may not be the true success you seek, so don't compare yourself to them. You see only the surface right now, only the sparkle. Be assured that you will experience your own shining moment shining moments if you stick to what you know all that glitters may not be gold for you these two together the seven of swords and all that glitters says that sometimes we can go we can do um sneaky things um and also wear a a mask to go after things or people or relationships or opportunities that look good that we're just it's not in the cars for us like it's not even who we are we're being fake to get 
somewhere else. We're, we're trying to impress people by not being ourselves. And what happens is that's even that is sneaky and deviant because you're putting on a show that's not even really who you are. And then when you don't get what you really want, because you won't, because if you're not being who you truly are, you will not receive what your soul truly needs. Then even if you win the prize, it won't be as sparkly and glittery and shiny, you know, as you had hoped. And so the card that I also um, pulled um, is a card called Yang. And it deals with taking action, um, that yang energy as opposed to the yin. Uh, <clears throat> which is very interesting because Pisces season is more yin, it's more receptive. So to get yang, this may be something that is preparing us for the upcoming uh, airy season, which will be dealing with taking action. Um, so yang says the masculine principle of movement and creative activity, the power to make things happen. Hope I put it. I should have already put that up there. Okay. Um, <laughs> taking action. Yang represents the power of action, the energies that propel the world forward, and manifesting thoughts and desire into concrete form. Now is the perfect time to act, for you can easily build momentum and headway. What you want will come to fruition if you proceed confidently. This card signifies new life and is a sure sign that obstacles have been overcome. There is no reason to hesitate. You are the shaper of your destiny now. The relationship message says, circumstances are supporting action on your part. It's okay to make the first move. Trust that you will quickly trust that you will quickly know where you stand. In matters of the heart, there is mo there is movement toward your highest good. So go forth with assurance. Passion is in the air, and now is the time to dance to the tune of love. Take the lead. Prosperity message says, projects, partnerships, and all matters relating to your business are out of the obstacle phase and are on the make it happen phase. Now's the time to stake your claim and get things done. While you can expect to be, to be busier than usual, this card tells you that you have all the energy and vitality you need to accomplish your goals. Abundance is waiting for you to claim it. So if I had to interpret all three of these cards together, um, hmm, um, the the uh, the seven of swords is saying, you know, um, strategize, but don't be devious. You know, look at all everything that's on the playing field, really study it, know your position, um, know the position of what you are wanting to obtain or acquire or experience in your life. Um, but also these two together, seven of swords and all that glitters, don't go after something just because it looks good. You know, are you good for it? Don't skip steps. Don't try to, um, you know, get something without putting the work in because Yang is saying you got to put in the work. Action is, is required for anything that you want and you can't, there is no, um, devious way. There's no shortcuts. There's no elevators on the path to success. What all the sayings are, um, you can't lie to yourself. You can't have any illusions. The only way to get it is to actually get it. And you have to develop yourself first so that your outer world can match your inner world. So that is the Oracle reading for every Everybody during Pisces season. I hope that this was beneficial to you. So up next, we're about to go into all of the signs. I need you to check your rising sign because we are, um, what I'm about to share here is where Pisces is showing up for, um, in your chart and the wisdom for you right now. And so, um, check your rising sign, uh, and that will help you to have probably the most accurate, understanding of what I'm about to share. Um, but if you don't know your rising sign, but you know your uh, your moon and or your sun sign, you know, then just listen to the, the segment of this video that applies to um, your sun sign, okay? So I'm going to go, I know I normally go from Aries to Pisces, but I'm gonna do it a little, little differently now. Since we're in Pisces season, I'm going to start with my Pisces people, okay? So Pisces. I am talking to my Pisces rising signs, but also if you don't know your rising sign, um, this can apply to um, all of my Pisces sun signs or Pisces moon signs. Pisces rules your first house. 
The first house deals with um, your identity, who you are, how you identify as a person. So Pisces season is a great time for you to really do some self-reflection on who am I? You know, what do I like? What do I dislike? Who do I say that I am when I show up in a room? And does who I say I am match how I actually show up? Because if you go back and listen to the first half of this video, I talk about how um, Pisces on one end can be very spiritual, very dreamy, very imaginative, very in tune with the most high, with God, you know, with spirit. But at the same time, um, Pisces energy can be very self-sabotaging and um, into an illusion and not seeing the truth. And so it's very important that you see the truth of who you are, that you really examine yourself and know who you are, not who you think you are or who you just imagine yourself to be, but who you really are. Um, now, because Pisces does deal with the imagination, you can definitely use uh, the various uh, principles, various principles such as like the law of attraction to dream and imagine and to manifest a more elevated version of yourself. But it's very important to know who you are and not pretend to be someone else, not pretend to like things that you don't like um, or people that, you know, and trying to please people that aren't in line with who you are. Go back and listen to the Oracle reading. Uh, I pulled several cards because I think that's going to really help you all to not be in the illusion, but to be in the reality of, of who you are and to, um, to really, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking for appreciate, appreciate the dreamy part of you, appreciate the creative part of you, appreciate the spiritual side of you and to really build those aspects up within yourself, all right? And so make sure you click all of the links down below. I have two audio classes that I think that you will absolutely love. The Feminine Self-Care Secrets to Attract Abundance and Joy. And the second one is Pleasure and Abundance Are Your Birthright. And also book your own Magic of Me intuitive natal chart reading while that is still available because a month from now, um, I'm only going to make my readings available to a select group of people. So make sure you book those readings now while they are still available. All right. Up next, Aries, my Aries people. So I'm looking for my Aries rising signs, but if you don't know your rising sign and you are an Aries sun sign or an Aries moon sign, then you know you can listen here too. So Aries, Pisces rules your 12th house. And the 12th house is a house that Pisces loves very well, very much. Um, it deals with um, your spirituality, um, how you connect with God, how you connect with spirit. But it is also the place, the 12th house is also the place known as the place of self-sabotage and escapism and illusions. So to all of my Aries people, I need you to go back and listen to the Oracle reading that I did a few minutes ago in this video um, because I talked a lot about making sure yes because Aries mm -hmm, Aries and Aries energy itself is action is goal oriented is forward moving and you might be tempted to take actions um, that are actually sabotaging you. So you want to make sure that the any action that you take, any words that you speak, but particularly action um, and how you proceed forward in your life is uh, very in line with spirit because Pisces season reminds us to stay connected to spirit, to stay connected to our righteous ancestors or to the most higher, higher selves and whatnot. And so if you didn't get the approval sign intuitively from your God or however you define that, then you probably don't want to just take rash and impulsive action because as I stated in the Oracle reading, you could actually be tripping yourself up. So you want to be mindful of anything that you have an impulse to just do, or especially if you have anything, any, if you're trying to bypass certain steps um, so that you can get, hurry up and get to where you want to get to, that could come back and bite you in the ass. So you want to be very careful and very mindful of that, um, that you only take action that you feel spiritually in your spiritual core that are right in 
and in alignment with your highest and best good, all right? So I have two classes that you will probably be interested in um, that you can click down below. I have the Feminine Self-Care Secrets to Attract Abundance and Joy. And then the second class that's available is uh, Pleasure and Abundance Are Your Birthright. Those two classes are an hour long e each and they're highly um, powerful. And I think that you will really, really enjoy those classes. So make sure you click down below to get that. And then also click down below to book a personal reading. Um, because I announced at the beginning of this video that my business will be changing very soon. And so how I make my readings available will also be changing. And so while it's still available to everyone, I want you to have your opportunity to get your reading with me. So make sure that you click down below to get all of the readings and watch all of the videos and download all the classes while they are still available. All right. Thanks for watching. All right. Up next, Taurus. Taurus. Taurians. My Taurians? Yes, my Taurians. <laughs> Welcome to Pisces season. I'm speaking to my Taurus rising signs, but if if you don't know your rising sign or maybe you do and that message didn't resonate with you, but you're a Taurus sun sign or a Taurus moon sign, then you can listen to this message as well. So all my Taurians out there, Pisces rules your 11th house. The 11th house deals with your circle of friends, your community network, um, your network equals your net worth <laughs> sort of thing. Um, the 11th house it also deals with you as a visionary. The 11th house helps you to see, um, even while there's no physical evidence, it helps you to see what's on the, on the horizon um, for you. So this Pisces season for all my Taurians is a great time for you to really uh, focus on your, your social networks. Which, how are your social networks actually building you up, particularly building you up spiritually because Pisces is a very spiritual um, sign. Um, do, does your, do your social networks build you up in a spiritual way and nurture you in a spiritual way or do they drain you? Um, do your social networks and your friend groups, are, are they supportive of your dreams? Um, and do they give you even constructive feedback on your dreams or do they kind of shoot down your dreams whenever you speak your heart? Now, it's very important that you are mindful that, you know, because Pisces does deal with the dreams and the imagination and fantasy, you might have these big dreams or things you want to do, experiences, and you share them with your social groups and they're like, I don't get it. Uh. So it's important that you don't feel that they are necessarily shooting your ideas down. It's just that Pisces also deals with illusions. So sometimes your social group can help you to see where there are holes in your dreams and your goals and they can help fill those holes for you so that you can actually accomplish your dreams. Um, but I did an Oracle reading, so I, I highly encourage that you rewind this video, go back to where I did the Oracle reading for everybody, because I talk about how, um, you know, that this season is also a time to be mindful that all that glitters isn't, isn't necessarily gold. I feel like for some of you, your social networks, if you utilize them properly, can help you to see the parts of your life that you have, that you are in an illusion about and that you are, um, too much in the fantasy realm about and not being as realistic and practical as you should be. All right. And so that is it for all of my Taurians. Make sure that you click down below because I have two amazing classes that I believe that you will love. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract abundance and joy. And the second class is pleasure and abundance are your birthright. Both of those classes, as soon as you purchase them, you get immediate access to the full, um, each of them are one hour, so the full one hour class, and they are available for a very limited time, so you wanna make sure that you get those. Also, if you have um, want to book a personal reading with me, particularly the uh, Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart Reading, where I examine your full chart, um, make sure that you book that because my readings and my business is actually going to be changing very soon and how and to whom I offer my readings to will be changing as well. And so you want to make sure that you get your reading while it, it is still open and available to everybody. So don't wait, click down below and get your reading. All right. Thanks for watching. 
All right, so Gemini. Hi to all of my Geminis out there. Happy Pisces season to you. This spe specific part of the video is for my rising sign Geminis, but if you don't know your rising sign, let's just say you're a sun sign Gemini or a moon sign Gemini, then you can listen in too because this part of the video could be very, very helpful to you. Um, Gemini, Pisces rules your 10th house and the 10th house is the place of career long-term goals and even your reputation and so um with pisces being there for you pisces being a very spiritual sign um and and it also deals with your dreams and your imagination and whatnot this could be a time where your career moves and your um you want to check in with spirit your higher self your god your ancestors have you define that to make sure that your career goals your long-term goals are in line with what um, spirit has for you um, because sometimes we have goals and plans and we go after things that um, just look good but are not necessarily um, what's best for us and I pulled uh, several oracle cards and a tarot uh, card earlier in the video I highly suggest that you go back rewind the tape and listen to that segment of the video because one of the cards that came up talked about how um, all that glitters isn't gold and sometimes we can go after things that appear good but are not good for us in the long term and sometimes we go after things in a kind of devious kind of trying to skip steps kind of way they can actually hurt our reputation because Pisces rules uh, the 10th house for you, which deals with reputation. So it's very important that you go back and listen to that part of the video where I did the Oracle reading. Um, but it's very important that, um, that you really uh, stay connected to spirit and not your illusion um, because Pisces can either keep you very connected with spirit or keep you locked into an illusion, make you think you have a good reputation when you don't, make you think that you're making good moves when you're not. So <laughs> you want to be mindful um, of that right now during Pisces season. And so I have two very important classes that I think you want to download and um, get immediate access to. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract abundance and joy. The second one is pleasure and abundance are your birthright. And um, each one of those classes are an hour long each. As soon as you purchase them, you get immediate access to them. And they're very highly uh, impactful, powerful classes that I, I know that you will love. Also, if you are interested in getting a reading from me, know that very soon my business will be changing and how and to whom I offer my readings to will also change. So you want to book a reading right now while they are still open and available to everybody. So the Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart Reading uh, will help you to know not only where Pisces is for you, but all of the signs and all of the planets in your own personal birth chart and what that means for your life's purpose, your career, your money, your love, all of that. So click down below and book a personal reading with me now while it is still available. Thanks for watching. All right, up next, Cancer, my, my rising sign Cancers. Now, if you don't know your rising sign, and let's just say you're a sun sign Cancer or a moon sign Cancer, that's okay. You can keep watching this segment of the video as well. Um, but for my rising sign Cancers, uh, Pisces rules your ninth house. The ninth house deals with travel. It deals with exploration. It deals with um, uh, personal growth and expansion and how um, travel and being around other people, meeting new people, studying um, things, uh, really taking your time to delve deep into a topic of interest, all of that, how all of that works to help you personally grow and expand. With Pisces being in your ninth house, and Pisces being a very spiritual sign, this perhaps is a great time for you to really review your own spirituality. Sometimes we're involved in a particular religion or spiritual path and it's just become a habit. Like we, it just becomes something that is always there so we don't really connect with it anymore. And so this will be a great time for you to, re, to spark that, um, that connection to to whatever faith or religion or spirituality that you have chosen for yourself you know read a new book and uh, that um is about your belief system um expand your knowledge on your faith expand your knowledge on what you claim 
to believe because that is how you personally um, will grow and expand as well. Um, but also if you are um, kind of in a place where you don't know what to believe, you don't know um, what is truth, you know, because the ninth house deals with um, finding the truth. This might be a great time for you to explore other faiths or other religions or other spiritual paths um, just to learn more, you know, to, um, even if you don't convert per se, but maybe just so that you can become more of a knowledgeable, well-rounded and expanded person, um, to help you to grow in that way. Also, um, make sure that you are using your spirituality in a way that really helps you to grow and to elevate in a positive way. Uh, because if you go back and to the beginning of this video or not the very beginning, but if you rewind, some minutes back, I did a full oracle reading for everybody. And one of the things that came up is that we could find ourselves um, kind of lying to ourselves or, you know, being devious in some kind of way, which is totally not in line with the ninth house that deals with finding the truth. So you want to go back and listen to that part of the video to make sure that you are walking in a way that is helping you to uh, elevate in a positive way. Um, in an honest and a truthful way and not one that is devious because your sun sign or rising sign cancer with Pisces season, both of you are water signs. And sometimes y'all get caught up, both Pisces energy and then cancer energy can be caught up so much on the emotional side and how you feel that you can ignore what actually is. And so then your feelings can cause you to behave in a deviant way. So you want to be mindful of that. All right. So make sure that you click down below because I have two amazing classes that I strongly believe that you will be very, very interested in. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract abundance and joy. And then the second one is pleasure and abundance are your birthright. Both of those classes are one hour classes. As soon as you uh, purchase them, you get um, immediate access to the full download. It comes to you immediately. And um, those classes will help you to really uh, grow in your ability to, to receive abundance, to receive joy, to receive love in your life. Also, because my business is changing very soon, how I make, um, how and to whom I make my readings available will be changing as well. So right now, if you have not received a reading from me and you've been thinking about it, I highly encourage you to click the link down below to book the Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart reading where I look at your full birth chart, where all the planets are, where all the signs are, and what that specifically means for you, or any of my other readings while they are still available. Don't sleep. Okay, because um, once things change, you may or may not have um, uh, availability or access to them when you want them. Okay, so make sure that you get those, um, everything that I mentioned um, while it is still available. All right, thanks for watching. Leo, hi Leo. So my rising sign Leos, um, Pisces rules your eighth house. Now, if you don't know your rising sign, but let's just say you are a sun sign Leo or a moon sign Leo, you can listen to this as well because it may resonate with you also, okay? So um, Leo, Pisces rules your eighth house and the eighth house is a house of depth, of mystery, of... Um, hmm, death in some ways now it doesn't necessarily mean a literal death of you per se but it's just the the ending of certain things um so that later on new life can come about it is about um also other people's money um and that could mean like loans that you have. It could mean um, taxes. We're still in tax season. So it could be taxes that you owe um, to other to the government. Um, um, or it could be money that is owed to you, coming to you. Um, but with us being in Pisces season, and Pisces kind of likes the eighth house too. Um, this is this Pisces season perhaps is or was a very emotionally deep time for you with you being a leo you might have found it overwhelming like a lot of feelings like you're being drowned by emotion or drowned by the emotions of others or drowned by mis miscommunication and you know emotional conflict in some kind of way but it's very important that you view all of that as a way of cutting um 
things or situations or uh, circumstances or even relationships that are not benefiting you or that you are not benefiting. Um, and so this is a great time to really connect with spirit because Pisces season is hard to really see what the truth is. It's hard to, to know exactly what to do, where to go, who to talk to, who to trust, who, you know, and all of that. And so your best al ally is, is spirit, is your higher self, is the most high, is God, is your righteous ancestors, however you identify, because it is through your spiritual connection that you're able to see the truth and not be um, under any illusions or under any confusion. Make sure you go back and listen to the oracle reading that I did um, somewhere in the first 20 minutes of this entire video um, because I pulled several cards for everybody to uh, to give us wisdom and guidance. And so one of the things that came out is that we all might be tempted to be devious in some kind of way. And the eighth house itself can be a very devious and manipulative place. And so you might be tempted during Pisces season to be manipulative or you have been manipulated um, or you might have a temptation to be devious in some kind of way and that can come back and bite you in the ass, especially if it's dealing with money, other people's money, you filing your taxes on time, you know, whatever, whatever. So you just want to be mindful of that and be aware of that and do everything that you can that is in line um, with with your highest and best good, with your um, the best, um, your best spiritual intention. That's going to be very, very important for you during Pisces season. Now I have two very wonderful glasses that I know you will absolutely enjoy and they're only available for a very limited time. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract abundance and joy. The second one is pleasure and abundance are your birthright. And both of those I talk about the ways in which to attract the abundance, the joy, the love, the wealth, the prosperity, whatever it is that you are wanting in your life and to be a vessel and a being of that kind of energy. Both of those classes are available for a very limited time. And when you click the link down below and you uh, purchase the classes, you get immediate access to them. They're automatically downloaded um, onto your device and to your email also is sent to you uh, via email. Also, I have several readings that are available and I mentioned this in the beginning of the video that my business will be changing very soon and how and to whom my readings are, are available to will also be changing. And so while they're still available to everyone, I want you to have your opportunity to get, uh, for example, the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading where I look at your personal full birth chart um, and know where all of the planets are, all of the signs and what that means for you walking in your purpose and living your best life. Um, but also my other readings. And so if you have been interested in getting a reading from me and you just haven't done it yet, now is the time to get that while it is still open and available to everyone. All right. So that is it. Make sure you click those links down below in the description box. And that is it. Thanks for watching. Virgo. Hi, Virgo. Now I'm talking to my Virgo rising signs, but if you are a Virgo sun sign or a Virgo moon, then it is perfectly fine for you to, to listen to this segment of the video as well. So for all of my Virgos out there, Pisces rules your seventh house. The seventh house is the place that deals with relationships, your partnerships, any of your one-to-one -one relationships. So that could be a love relationship. That could be, you know, just you and one child. That could be you and a business partner basically the seventh house deals with how you show up in your relationships so during Pisces season um, you this could be a time when you really need to infuse your relationships with spirituality if you are partnered with someone or you are dating then it's, it's important that you don't ignore the spiritual aspect of you um, sometimes we can be very caught up in just you know the practicality you know the down-to-earth stuff and um, you know money food clothes physical body, whatever whatever right but what is life without spirit you know, it's spirit that that gives life. It is spirit that inspires how we live. And so having a relationship that may be physically good, but is not, you know, doesn't help or support you in a spiritual way is kind of like, uh, you know. 
So you want to, you know, infuse your relationships with spirituality. And even if you're not outright saying, you know, God told me to say this, or my intuition said this, or my ancestors said that, right? But um, just bringing elements of um, spirituality into your relationship is, I mean, do things like um, learn about gemstones and crystals together, right? And I actually have an upcoming class about that, um, which will take place on April 3rd. That link is down below if you want to uh, join me for that in-person class. But, you know, um, learn about gemstones and crystals together. Or if you have a business partnership, you know, have uh, gemstones and crystals that represent abundance, such as citrine or venturine in your place of business or an amethyst, because amethyst is actually one of the stones that really resonates with Pisces energy because it helps connect one um, with with spirit so that you can hear what spirit is saying. You get what I'm saying? So that's a fun kind of way of bringing a spiritual component into your relationships, into something that is very, very physical. Um, also because we are having a full moon in the sign of Virgo during Pisces season, this is a time to look at how to combine your spirituality with your day-to-day -day practical life. So even since Virgo deals with health and wellness and the physical body, um, maybe this is a good time to look at, you know, what foods um, you and your partner are, are enjoying together. It's almost like I'm seeing some of you even cooking like really healthy meals that help to kind of lighten your spirit, help to lighten um, your physical body as well as your spirit, you know, maybe even juicing together and learning about um, how all of these uh, healthy foods are also helping you on the spiritual and soul part of you. And um, and so there's so many creative ways to go about doing that, but this will be a great time for you to do that. And also for you personally outside of your partnership, to make sure that you are very much in tune and connected with your higher self, your God, your ancestors, to make sure that you are seeing things clearly in your relationships because um, um, Pisces sometimes can cause one to be in an illusion and you don't want to be in an illusion about what your partnerships actually are. So I also highly encourage you to go back and listen to the beginning of this video where I pulled the Oracle cards for everybody for Pisces season. Because I talked about how, you know, um, all that glitters isn't gold and um, that Pisces season could be a time where we want things. In this case, you might want a relationship with someone that maybe isn't best for you spiritually. So make sure you go back and listen to the Oracle reading that I did um several minutes back on the same video. I have two amazing audio classes that I, I know that you will absolutely love, my dear Virgos. I have the first one is the Feminine Self-Care Secrets to Attract Abundance and Joy. And the second one is Pleasure and Abundance Are Your Birthright. Those two classes, I delve deeply into the feminine energy. Um, and Virgo is a feminine sign, whether you are a man or a woman. It is a sign that can be very receptive and it's through your your state of being that you then attract to you um, abundance, joy, and pleasure. And so I, in both of those classes, I talk about exactly what to do to attract those into your life. Um, and as soon as you purchase those classes, you get immediate access to them. They're downloaded onto your device and sent to your email as well. Um, and they are available for a very limited time. So you want to make sure you get those now. And then um, my readings, my because my business is changing, um, how I offer my readings and to whom I offer them will be changing very soon as well. And so if you have been wanting a reading from me and you've been kind of sitting on the fence about that, it's time to get off the fence and do what this other car said, Yang, take action. Click down below and book a personal reading. Um, for example, like the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading, where I look at your full birth chart, where all the signs are, all the planets, what does that mean for your life's purpose and your money, your love, your career, all of that. Um, but any of my readings, make sure that you book those now because very soon, um, they either, they won't all be available or they'll only be available, um, to a select group. So you want to make sure you get that get any of those while they are still available. All right. And so that is it. Thank you all so much for watching. Libra to all of my Libra rising signs. <laughs> this segment of the video is for Libra rising signs. But if you don't know your rising sign, and let's just say you're a Libra sun sign, 
or a Libra moon sign, you can continue watching this segment of the video because it will resonate with you as well. Um, but for all of my Libras out there, Pisces rules your sixth house. The sixth house deals with your habits, your routines, your health and wellness, um, even sickness and disease, you know, if you're not taking care of your health and wellness. Wow. Okay. So with Pisces being there, it's very important that because Pisces can deal with illusions and you might not see clearly, especially because we had a Mercury retrograde, a heavy one in Pisces this season. Um, if there's anything that you're feeling in your physical body that you know you need to get checked out and you've been kind of dragging your feet about it, not doing it or, you know, um, not wanting to make the appointment, please make the appointment. Check on your health and wellness. It might not even be anything serious. You want to nip a problem in the bud while it's young before it becomes a bigger problem problem um, because your sign Libra deals with balance, keeping things balanced in harmony and um, in a state of, of ma'at, you know, of, of truth and justice and balance. And how can you live a life of balance and harmony if you're sick, if you're not well, if you have um, issues in your body that you're ignoring? Um, because Pisces, again, deals with the illusions and wanting to escape from problems. So even if it's not in your physical body, but let's just say it's an issue in your job or issue in your career, issue with your money that you're just ignoring, this is a time to really connect with spirit because Pisces season isn't about having all of the answers and knowing exactly what to do. It is really a time for connecting with spirit, your higher self, your God, your ancestors, whatever, to get clarity on um, on what path to take and what and, and the right guidance that you need. So this will be a great time for you to connect with spirit, to know what you should be doing, which direction you should be going in and what guidance um, you actually need because you may not know the answers. And I talk about that. Um, I talked about that in the Oracle reading that I did at the beginning, um, not at the very beginning of the video, but probably about 20 minutes in, I did the Oracle reading for everybody. So make sure you go back and listen to that because um, it warned us about being devious it warned us about um it warned us against doing things that aren't really solving the problem and trying to bypass you know facing issues and facing problems um because we just think we can get around it when really that will come back and bite us in the ass so you want to make sure that you go back and listen to that part of the video to get that wisdom and guidance there make sure you stay connected to spirit because spirit will always guide you in a way that keeps you harmonious and imbalanced uh, keep you balanced and um, walking in your highest good and your highest truth. So I have two very um, wonderful classes that I think that you will absolutely love. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract wealth, to attract abundance and joy. And the second one is pleasure and abundance are your birthright. Those are two audio classes. Each of them are an hour long each. They really guide you through using that divine feminine energy to attract the abundance, joy, prosperity, wealth, and love that you so desire um, in your life. And as soon as you click the link to download and purchase them, you get immediate access to those classes. So make sure that you um, click down below to get them now because they're only available for a very limited time. And speaking of limited time, so are my readings. Um, as I announced at the beginning of the video, my business will be changing very soon, which means how and to whom I offer my uh, readings to will be changing as well. And so if you have been wanting a reading from me, uh, for example, like the Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart reading, where I examine your full birth chart and uh, help you to discover your life's purpose and how you make money best in your career and your love and all, air, all things concerning you, um, you want to make sure that you book that reading now while it is still available for everyone to purchase because that will be changing very, very soon. And when I say soon, I mean like within the next two weeks. So you want to make sure that you get um, your own reading as well as download those classes while they are still available. All right. I so appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for watching. All right. Scorpio. Hi, Scorpio. All right. So this segment of the video is for my rising sign Scorpios. But if you are a sun sign Scorpio or a moon sign Scorpio, um, you can listen to this part too, because it's going to resonate with you as well. So Pisces rules your fifth house. 
The fifth house is a house of pleasure, of joy, of fun, of excitement, of creativity. <clears throat> and so this is a time with Pisces being a sign of spirituality, of connecting to um, connecting to God, if you will, connecting to your higher self, but also connecting to your imagination and your dreams and your fantasies. This would probably be a great time for you to just not take life so super seriously, but to actually allow yourself to just kind of play and have fun with all of your dreams and your fantasies. The fifth house actually also deals with like romance and, you know, it's one of the houses that can also deal somewhat with um, sexual pleasure and fun. So if you have like a sexual fantasy or uh, you've been dreaming or have it in your mind an imagination of some sort of sexual fantasy, this might be a great time to play it out. You know what I mean? Because Pisces, even though one of, I said this earlier in the video, but one on its lower end does deal with like the illusion, but then it might be a great time for you to dip your toe in the illusions, in the, you know, in the fantasy, um, and just have fun with it and don't take it seriously. So um, if, you, if you have a creative endeavor that you've just been wanting to kind of pursue, um, but if you've also just been wanting to, uh, to ignite a little bit more pleasure or fun into your life in general or into your romantic or sexual life, this might be a great time to, to do that. Just know that, you know, if you ain't locked down with somebody and, um, and you're thinking that, uh, enjoying all of this, this sexual pleasure is going to also equate to meaning that you're in a relationship with somebody. It might not mean that. Okay. So that's the lower end of that Pisces being in an illusion. Like don't lie to yourself and think just cause y'all had some good sexual fun that that means that's your boo for life. I mean, it might be, but it might not be, you know, so just enjoy it for what it is, but allow yourself to take pleasure in having fun in your creativity. Make sure you go back and listen to the Oracle reading that I did at the be uh, probably like 20 minutes or so into this video, um, because I did talk about how Pisces season can be the time when we want to be devious or sneaky and how that can come and bite us in the ass. So if you're wanting to have fun, and especially sexual fun in a way that's devious, you know, especially if you are committed to someone, if you are, you know, or you doing it with somebody who's committed to somebody else and you thinking you can get away with it, you probably won't. Okay. So you want to be mindful of that make sure you go back and listen to that part of the video so that you get all of the details about that and you know how to conduct yourself. All right. But other than that, have fun. So I have two very wonderful classes that I think you will absolutely love. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract abundance and joy. The second one is pleasure and abundance are your birthright, which I think based on what I just told y'all, Y'all will really absolutely love those two classes. Each one of those are an hour long each. And as soon as you purchase them, you get immediate access to them. They immediately are downloaded onto your device and sent to your email. And you have lifetime access to those two classes. Um, but that offer is for a very limited time. So make sure you get them now. And speaking of limited time, so are my readings. I announced earlier that how I am doing business will change very soon. That means that how and to whom my readings are available will also change. And so if you have been wanting a reading from me, um, for example, like the Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart reading, where I look at all of the signs in your birth chart, all of the planets, and help you to discover your purpose, how you make money, your career, your reputation, your love life, your all your spirituality, all of that kind of stuff. If you are interested in that or any of my other readings, now is the time to get those because within the next two weeks or so, um, how my readings are available, uh, they won't be available, just readily available, available to everyone at any given moment. So you want to make sure that you get those now while they are still available to everyone. All right. So thanks so much for watching. Up next, all right, so I have Sagittarius. Sagittarius, to my Sagittarius rising signs, 
But if you don't know what your rising sign is and you're a Sagittarius sun sign or a Sagittarius moon sign, you can continue watching right here because what I will share will resonate with you as well. So Pisces, for all of my Sagittarians, Pisces rules your fourth house. The fourth house literally deals with house and home. Um, it deals with your, your past and your upbringing, your family, particularly your mother, but also um, how you mother, or even if you're a man and you have children, how you love and nurture your children. How do you take care of your home? Does your home feel like a home? Is it your comfort place? Is it your safe haven? Um, this is a great time um, because Pisces does deal with spirituality. Um, to make sure that they, that how is spirituality celebrated and honored in your home? Do you have an altar space? Hmm? That might be great for you all. Um, to Do you have a space in your home that is sacred that you can go to and pray and meditate in? Um, this will be a great time to, to set those things up. Also, this is a great time to use your spirituality, your connection to God, your ancestors, your higher self, however you define that to um connect with um any to to get clarity on if there's any elements of your family life or your home life that needs healing um that needs to evolve and to elevate instead of because sagittarius energy can be very combustible in some ways like y'all can be seemingly quiet 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 and then boom y'all have a flare-up and then then you're done with it and that might not be the best way to address um issues that require spirit to help you with so this would be a great time to utilize to really go in deep in your spiritual self to utilize that aspect of yourself to get clarity and guidance on how to deal with any family issues that might be touchy, that might uh, need some healing and some guidance. And so um, make sure that you go back and uh, watch the beginning of this video where I did the Oracle reading for um, everybody because, and here's the other card that was pulled, um, because I really went into detail on that segment of the video on how this Pisces season, we might be tempted to do things or handle things in a way that is not the best, that might even be classified as devious in some ways and so you want to make sure you go back and listen to that um so that you can proceed with caution on however you function in your house your home with your children or with your parents and even with your spouse or anybody who lives in your home that's going to be very important to you all right so i have two classes that i think you will absolutely love that you can download and listen to right now. The first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract wealth, to attract abundance and joy. The second one is pleasure and abundance are your birthright. Both of those classes teach you how to tap into the feminine energy of your sacral chakra and even your solar plexus to attract the abundance, joy, prosperity and love and peace that you desire and deserve in your life as soon as you purchase those classes you get immediate access to them they're immediately downloaded to your device as well as a copy sent to your email and so you will have immediate access to them but this offer is for a very limited time so don't drag your feet make sure you click down below now and purchase those uh, audio classes also speaking of a limited time because my business is changing, and I mentioned this at the beginning of this entire video, because my my uh, business is changing, how and to whom I offer my readings to is about to change as well. And so if you have been wanting to book a personal reading with me, whether it's just a Clarity Now reading to get answers to questions, or like uh, the Magic of Me intuitive natal chart reading, where I look at your entire birth chart and all of the planets and the signs in your chart and help you to discover your purpose and your love life and your spiritual life and your career money life, all of that. Um, now is the time to do so because very soon, and when I say very soon, I mean within the next two to three weeks, definitely by the time we get into April, um, how my, uh, not everybody will have ready access to book readings with me. So if you've been wanting to book a reading with me, now is the time to do so. Click down below and book your own personal reading with me today. Thanks so much for watching. All right. Who is next? Capricorn. How y'all doing Capricorn? My Capricorn rising signs, but 
If you are a Capricorn sun sign or a Capricorn moon sign, you can continue watching as well as what I am about to share will, will resonate with you as well. So to all of my Capricorns, Pisces rules your third house and the third house deals with communication. It deals with um, how you self-express. That mean, means that could be how you talk, uh, speak, think, write, how you process information. Um, all of that is encompassed in the third house. Also, it deals with your siblings um, and or people who were raised in your household like siblings. So it could even be your cousins. But, you know, if you were raised very close to them, like brother and sister, then it could deal with them as well. So during Pisces season, um, because we had a Mercury retrograde in Pisces and it was kind of a tough one for a lot of people, you may have experienced a lot of breakdowns in communication. You may have felt misunderstood. Um, and you, this possibly could possibly have been even amongst your own siblings or family members, but also because Capricorn deals with, you know, um, your sign really heavily deals with money and career moves. You could have experienced, could have experienced miscommunication in your business, in your career or amongst coworkers, um, maybe where people didn't understand you or you didn't understand them. And there could have been some sort of breakdown that then impacted how y'all could take action. And I highly encourage that you rewind this video and go back and listen to where I did the Oracle reading for everybody because I talked about how <clears throat> this Pisces season uh, is a time where we might be tempted to take action that is devious, that's trying to go around having open communication. It's just, you know, about how am I going to win? How am I going to get my leg up? I don't care how everybody else gets theirs. How am I going to get mine? So you want to be mindful um, not to take any action or to communicate in a way that is half the truth or half right but not really totally detailing the full picture because that could come back and bite you in the ass that could actually cause you to lose money that could actually cause you to lose favor or lose important connections in your network that could overall impact you in a negative way um, and so you want to make sure that you are communicating in a way that is open and honest and clear. You want to make sure that you are self-expressing in a way that's open and honest and clear. And if you even receive information that you are not understanding what it is, ask for clarity. But Pisces, because Pisces also deals with your spiritual connection, you might not get the, the clarity that you want from another person. This might actually require time uh, in prayer and meditation to get the clarity and guidance that you need. But because y'all are Capricorns, very earth sign, some of you, some of you, not all of you, but some of you, if your spiritual connection isn't very strong, then sometimes spirit will um, speak through a person that you do trust to give you the wisdom and guidance that you need. But also, but check in with yourself. Know when, when a message, when information um, given to you really resonates with your heart and your spirit so that you can know that it's the truth that you can then take action on. And I talked about that action in the Oracle reading. So um, now I have two classes that I think I know that you will absolutely love. The first one is the Feminine Self-Care Secrets to Attract Abundance and Joy. And the second one is Abundance, excuse me, Pleasure and Abundance are Your Birthright. Those two classes, I go into detail on how to self-care in a feminine way, how to align yourself so that you can attract the abundance of money, of wealth, prosperity, joy, love, sweetness of life that you so desire, you know, because it's not always about the work and the grind and trying to make things happen. It's about becoming the person who is so aligned that you just attract those things easily and joyously into your life and how to enjoy luxury in a way that, that is pleasurable um, to you. And so both of those classes are an hour long each. And as soon as you click the link to purchase and download them, you get immediate access to them. They're sent to your device. They're sent to your email as well. So you get immediate access to the full classes and you have lifetime access to those classes but this offer is only available for a very limited time. So make sure that you click the link down below to get them now. And speaking of a limited time, my readings 
are also available for a very limited time. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that how and to whom I make my readings available um, will be changing. And so they will not be readily available to everybody at any given time. And so if you have been wanting a reading from me, whether it's a Clarity Now reading, a one card energy reading, or even if it's the big boy, the big girl, the the uh, the magic of me intuitive natal chart reading where I look at your full birth chart and help you to understand, you know, your life's purpose and your money and your career and your love and your spirituality, all of that. Um, by looking at the planets and all of the signs that are in your birth chart, now is the time to book that reading um, because very soon, like within the next two to three weeks, uh, they won't be available um, just open and available to everybody at any given moment. So make sure that you book those readings with me now while you still can. All right. Thanks so much for watching. All right. Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarius. All right. So shout out to all my Aquarius suns, excuse me, all my Aquarius rising signs. But if you don't know your rising sign and you are an Aquarius sun sign or an Aquarius moon sign, you can listen to this as well because what I'm about to share, this this part of the video will resonate with you as well. So to all my Aquarian, Aquarians out there, Pisces rules your second house. The second house deals with your values. What do you value? Um, and, and very strongly, it definitely does deal with money or anything that is given a monetary value. How do you make your money? How does money come to you? What doors and what avenues are you are open that allows money to flow to you? Um, how do you specifically show up in the world so that money can come to you? So yes, monetary value, but also anything that you value. If you value your family, if you value your health, um, but this is a great time to look at everywhere that your money goes because usually where your money goes is where your value flows if that makes sense where your money goes is where um one can know where your values are so if you are spending a lot of money um going to the gym and buying healthy foods then one could ascertain that you value your health if a lot of your money goes to the upkeep of your home or making sure that your children have you know good uh nice clothes to wear or whatever then one could assume then that you value your home and family life okay so this is a very good time to look at where your money is going to help you to understand your values but because this is pisces season and pisces deals with spirituality and your connection to the divine how much of yourself are you giving over to your spiritual life because it's very easy to give so much of yourself over to, you know, making sure you're making enough money, making sure you're paying your bills, making sure you're taking care of your earthly responsibilities. But how much of yourself are you sowing into your spiritual growth? How are you adding value to your spiritual life and to your spiritual self? Because it is through your spiritual self that your physical self is then blessed and increased. And if you go back, I highly encourage you to go back and listen to probably like 20 or 30 minutes into this entire video. I did the Oracle reading for everybody. And one of the things that came out was this card here that talks about all that glitters isn't gold. Sometimes we go after things that we think will grow us, that will add value to our lives, but really it's like fool's gold. And so you are highly encouraged during Pisces season to know that your wealth actually is um, derived from the spirit realm. It's not always derived just from what you do and the action you take. And if you get caught up in just taking this dealt with action, this dealt with, you know, devious action, you know, um, and then all that glitters is, is ain't gold, you know. So <clears throat> if you are taking a lot of action, hoping to strike gold and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're doing I mean, you're not checking in with spirit to make sure that your actions are in line and in tune with what spirit, your God, your higher self, your righteous and ascendant ancestors have 
um, in store for you, then you could be taking action that is actually going to backfire because Pisces season also deals with self-sabotage, you know, backfiring energy and illusion. So don't be in, under any illusions. T check in with spirit and make sure that you are going down the right path, that you are applying your resources, your financial resources and your other physical resources in a way that is actually going to bless you and your loved ones and your family in the long run. Now I have two very amazing classes that you are going to absolutely love and this is where you should put your financial resources to add value to your life the first one is the feminine self-care secrets to attract abundance and joy the second class is abundance excuse me is pleasure and abundance are your birthright both of those classes are one hour long each and I guide you through how to self-care in a feminine way that helps you to align um, to the abundance of joy, abundance of wealth, abundance of money, abundance of love, abundance of good health, whatever it is that, that is in your highest and best good, how to align to that so you can attract it into your life, how to enjoy life, um, why pleasure and luxury are not dirty words, but they are actually inspired by spirit. You know, these are things that we should be experiencing in our lives regularly and often. And so when you download those classes, you get immediate access to them. They're each only $19.99 and you get lifetime access to those classes. They never go away. Um, you always can, you will always have access to them. Um, but this offer is available for only a limited time. So make sure that you Click down below now to download those classes while they are still available. And speaking of limited time, I talked about at the beginning of this video how my business is changing, which means how and to whom I make my readings available will also change. And so if you have been wanting a reading from me, if you've been on the fence about um, <clears throat> booking a reading with me, now is the time to do it. So whether it's the Clarity Now reading, uh, the One Card Energy reading, or the big one, the Magic of Me Intuitive Natal Chart Reading, where I look at your full birth chart, look at all of the signs, all of the planets in your chart to help you discover your purpose, your, your goals, your money, your career path, your spirituality, your love life. Um, now's the time to book those readings because they will not be available for much longer to just any and everybody at any given moment. And when I say not much longer, I mean within the next two to three weeks, they're not going to be available as you see them now. So make sure that you book those readings with me while they are still available and also get those two classes that I mentioned to you as well. All right, so thanks for watching. All right, so that is it for everybody's of Pisces, including you. Thank you all so much for watching. I so appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in and for waiting this long to get the Pisces video. It just, it beings like that sometimes. So, uh, make sure you go back and watch the Oracle reading, um, but also make sure you click the link down below to get those two audio classes of uh, the Feminine Self-Care Secrets to Attract Abundance and Joy and Pleasure and Abundance are your birthright because they are only going to be available for a very limited time. And as soon as you purchase them, you get full immediate access to the full classes on your device. You can listen to them time and time again. Also make sure you book your readings while they're still available because in the next few weeks, I'm not going to have my readings open and available to any and everybody at any given moment. The way my business is changing uh, means that how I make those readings available will change as well. So Make sure you get those readings. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you have benefited from it in any kind of way because that encourages me to keep doing these free videos. Also, what encourages me to keep doing these free videos is when you all um, not only bless me with your views, but also bless me with a love offering, also known as a donation. So how to do that is down below. That link is down below to leave a love offering. I don't care if it's $5. I don't care if it's 5000 It doesn't matter. It's about the reciprocity. Um, and so thank you all so much for watching. And until we speak again, I guess I will see you in the pick a card readings. And I will see you in everybody's and Aries, including you. Peace and love.